If you're enjoying the NBA right now, you're questioning, are the Phoenix Suns as good as they were advertised to be to start the season? They now sit 44-31 and here, Coach, after a 124-111 to victory over the New Orleans Pelicans. When we talk about the big three, Kevin Durant, 20 points, Bradley Beal, 13 points, but Devin Booker, 52 points, was lights out from three-point range right from the jump as Phoenix scored 46 points in the first quarter and cruised to a victory. Coach, they came in as a slight underdog. This game goes over, and they gain a game in the standings against the Pelicans. And it was really a crucial matchup. A Phoenix Suns team, guys, that has the toughest schedule uh, by far uh, in the NBA. Folks, they have seven games left. The, the, the strength of schedule percentage of their opponents is 633. Like, that's absurd. Two against Minnesota, two against the Clippers, one against Cleveland, one more against the Pelicans, and one against the Kings. And they needed this game badly as they now sit one game behind the Pelicans. So what do you do when that happens? you got to have your stars show up. And boy, did Devin mm-hmm. Booker show up and show out to the point where Kevin Durant was like, you take it. I'll, sit, I'll be baby in the corner. You take care of the old hefty, heavy lifting. When you need me, I got you. But you go ahead and you take care of this himself. And what a performance. 8 of 16 from 3. Uh, and uh, a matchup of where you can see how explosive Phoenix can be offensively. What a job by them. And they are going to try like you know what, Donnie, to get to that 6 seed. Mm-hmm. We, we did have a chance to see uh, a, a future playing game here that nobody asked for a coach. Oh. Uh, Atlanta and Chicago last night. 113-101 Chicago the night before. Great game, great win against Minnesota. They come home, and what happens? They lose to the Atlanta Hawks here. My goodness. What what do we do with these two teams here, Coach? I don't know. Let them play in the loser. Light goes them home. on fire. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's, what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what we're going to do. We're basically going to let them play, uh, you know, the, the 9-10 game. One of you suckers goes home, and the other one of you uh, goes home after that. Listen. <laughs> you got you got to you got to talk about uh, at, Atlanta and, and let's be honest you know uh, Dejounte Murray who, who was off a little bit has been absolutely fantastic since Trey Young has been down. I wonder if that means maybe Trey gets moved in the offseason because I think mm. at some point they have to split them up. Uh, but those teams are tied for uh, with forty losses. This is critical, folks. Yeah. This is very critical because of the fact of the nine ten game you get home court for that one game. Hey, let's be honest. Mm. I, I, I don't even know if there's something called home court in Atlanta. I'm a Knicks fan. You go down to Atlanta for a Knicks <laughs> game, and there's about 95% Knicks fans. I don't even know if they have. I don't even know if they have 5,000 Hawks fans. But that's okay. What a performance by them. They're playing better basketball. Winners of six out of the last ten games. Either way, guys, this is nine ten. We'll see this in a couple of weeks. One goes home. One of them goes out against a loser of, of probably uh, Miami or Philadelphia, unless one of them jumps over Indiana, who's in that sixth spot right now. Every win counts, Coach, at this time of the year, which includes the Orlando Magic picking up a one-point victory over the Portland Trailblazers. Now, if you saw the Lions closing time last night, 17.5-point favorite for Orlando. Now, obviously, they don't cover that, but they do win this basketball game. And also, 207 points easily stays under the total. But Orlando now, in that fifth seed in the Eastern Conference, every win, as I said, matters here, looking to solidify their place so they can avoid that play-in series here. It's not a nice victory, but in a way, it is. You don't need stop points right now coach you just need victories for Orlando even if you probably thought it was going to be easier yeah you're right and and, and the Orlando team that for a long time guys coming out of the all-star break had the easiest schedule in the NBA now they have the 11th toughest down the stretch so they have some interesting matchups uh most notably two against the Milwaukee Bucks uh, a team that's right now sitting in second place I do believe I think two games ahead of uh of the Knicks and Cleveland. So, you know, what a story in Orlando. And what, what they've done, folks, is they've really turned it up uh, defensively. Shout out to Jamal Mosley, who's done a great job in getting this team to to, to really buy in uh, to the defensive philosophy, philosophy and principles. That's something that you will not see out of young teams. But they'll take a win any chance they get. Uh, as for Portland, this is a team that's going absolutely nowhere. I mean, you got 20 and 30, 12 out of DeAndre Ayton, I guess. He decided he wanted to show up and play last night because you never know what you're going to get out of him, either that or an 8-7 and seven the next night. So a good win for them, but their schedule tightens up. That 2-3-4-5 that race is interesting, and then you have like the 4-5-6-7-8 race is also interesting as well. 
Two other games just to hit quickly here, Coach. The Celtics and the Hornets. The Celtics easily winning by 14 points, but not covering because they were on the road as 17-point <laughs> favorites against the Hornets. And the Pacers got out the pace car last night, 133-111 over the Nets last night. Well, for Indiana, I, I thought this was an easy play to take them. Uh, Brooklyn Nets team that looked terrible at home, giving up 40 points to LeBron James. Then it's a fly on the road to go play the team that's one of the most uh, highest-paced teams in the NBA. Indiana, another team trying to stand up playing a tournament. It's going to be fun the last couple of weeks figuring out who gets those top six seeds because all those teams are going for it in the East and West. We are right around the corner from the NBA playoffs. And as Coach said, jockeying for position here. We'll see what teams wind up in the top six or have to play their way into the playoffs themselves. But there's two teams in the Eastern Conference. We have to watch out for the return of the Mac in Philadelphia. Could it be? Let's talk about it next right here on the early line. 